Hi, this is Shad, also known as Necro Moon Yeti on unobtainium13.com, and I'm going to be doing a demonstration in RPG Maker VX Ace, showing you how to make some real-time uh, stealth combat sequences in your maps. What we have here is a basic uh, scenario. Let's say you're breaking into the dungeon of a castle, and you sneak in behind these crates, and you gotta get to this door, and the door is locked. You have a padding guard that goes around the middle here and he has the key you have to kill him to get through well you might not want to just engage him head on in one of your traditional dragon quest style uh, battles maybe you want to kill him within the map this is going to make that possible uh, what's going to happen is we're going to create a, uh, a few parallel processes that constantly refresh uh, the player's location as well as the NPC's location as the NPC moves along and whether he kills you or you kill him is going to depend on your location in relation to his. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to be employing um, regions primarily to get this done. <clears throat> First of all, uh, what we want to do, we'll just start right ahead with the regions. Let me move this over. Um, you're going, you have your guard right here you're going to want to create a separate region for any zone in the map in which what he will be killing is going to be slightly different so let's say he's right here you want him to kill everything that he can see in front of you and you want him to be able to kill you if you're getting too close he can hear your footsteps he's going to turn around and kill you let's say if you get in this area right here um, right here you know you'll be fine right there but you can't come up here and he'll still be targeting everything ahead of him Basically, you're going to want to give each corner its own zone, each open area its own zone, and you're going to want to be cautious about passages like this. This is where we're going to add the mechanic where you can beat him. So we'll skip that for now and go around the circle. I guess it's not really a circle. We can fill these in. We're going to give each one its own region because we're going to do something separate depending on where you're standing. You know, if you're standing, if you're standing right on the edge here, we're going to be kind of jerks about it. You know, the guy's going to be able to see you as soon as you can see him. He's clearly stronger than you, so he's going to kick your butt. If you're standing right here and you're facing him, prepared to attack, then you're going to rush up and kill him. Likewise, if you're standing on 12 and he's here, you can rush up and kill him. Those are going to be our two kill zones. That's it for regions as far as putting them into place. Now we just have to manipulate them. Uh, we're to start out, uh, you can ignore some of these other events I added. We'll come back to this later. This is just a door and the enemy. You'll see with the enemy, he's blank. Action button, nothing added at all. All we have is the graphic. For easy reference, we'll call him enemy. Now down here, this will be our first event. This is event 01. We want to call this uh, something we'll remember, like uh, player location. And this is going to be a parallel process. This is going to be a, the event that constantly refreshes in order to tell the game where you're situated in relation to the regions. To do this, we can uh, create two variables that are going to pull your uh, latitude and longitude coordinates on the map. You can go to create variable and game data. You're going to find a character map X option. You can do this for player. You can do this for any other event as well. We're going to do player map X and we're going to call that player X. And we're going to do the same thing for your Y location. Now once these variables are in place, there's an option on the third tab under map called get location info. And this is critical. We're going to uh, create a third variable 
this is going to be player region this is going to be the variable that is constantly refreshing and telling the game where your character is currently standing under info type you'll see a number of options I haven't really played around with the others yet I'm sure they're very useful too but we're going to be going with region ID and the variables for region ID are going to be your X and your Y we want this to be its own separate process its own separate event because um, the other events say the event that's going to tell us where he's at is going to be useless once he's been defeated so we're going to want to end that but this so long as your map's going on you'll probably want to keep it for future similar encounters down the line now before we put in his location we're going to set up his pat we want him to pat around this circle this is going to be its own separate event distinct from uh, what's going on with our player and distinct from the parallel process that's going to be grabbing his location looks like 8 to the left 5 up and then we're going to test this to make sure we got it right because if we didn't then nothing's going to work so speed him up temporarily for the test. I didn't set that to auto run, or parallel process rather. And there he goes, so we did that correctly. Put him back to a decent speed. And here we go. Now we're going to create an event much like this one that gathers the enemy's information. So we'll just copy and paste that into here and adjust these accordingly. enemy X and enemy Y and enemy region Now what we need to do is establish where we want him to kill you. Like if he's in 1, then he'll be killing anyone in 1, 2, 16, 3, 4, and 10. If he's in 2, we'll do 2, 16, 3, 4, and 1, but 10 will be okay. 16 will kill 1 through 4 here as well as 14, so on. Entering this is a lot faster than it might seem. This is going to look tedious at first, but it actually goes very quickly. We're going to do this via... Um, conditional branches. We're going to pull the enemy's region and we can set it to constant. So we'll start out, you always want to turn set handling off for what we're doing because you won't really need an else statement here. Enemy's region equals 1 then if the player's region is also 1, second conditional branch then we're going to say this kills the player. We're going to create a switch here. You die. And then we're, what we're going to want to do, before you get too far into this, you're going to want to write down every single combination that you have here. I already did that to save some time. Here's what we're looking at. Um, if he's in one, you're going to die in all of these. If he's in two, you're going to die in all of these, etc if he's in 15 and you're in 12 and facing up you're gonna kill him if he's in 16 you're in 13 and facing down you're gonna kill him we just have to enter all of that
And the easiest way to do that, once you have one entered, is just copy and paste it, go down the line. For one, we have six different options. We're just going to edit them in. And you'll see this looks like it's going to take a while because you have dozens of possible combinations. But it actually moves a lot faster than you might think. Whenever I did this, it actually only took me about four minutes. Uh, we're just going to copy and paste the whole thing starting from the enemy region to specify what goes on in region 2. Edit the whole thing. We'll let you set it to the enemy's region 2. And then look for 2. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 16. We already have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 16. We're just going to delete 10. We're already done with that row. Uh, we'll go down through this process. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. Uh, what I did up here was already do all that for you. We're just going to copy all this data. That's what it's going to look like when you're done. And we're going to stick it in here. Now, I did not add to this yet. I wanted to show you uh, the alternatives where you're going to kill them. You want to do these in numerical order. It Down the line, as you add more and more mechanics, it makes finding things a hell of a lot easier. So, all our enemy regions are in order. We're looking for enemy region 15. So, we're going to go down to the bottom. Here's 15. We want to do 12. So, we're just going to copy one of these for now. Say, player region 12. Now we have an additional conditional here. The player has to be facing up. So, we're going to bury a third conditional branch. And you can go to tab 3 here, character, player, or any event, facing up. Move this up to here, and instead of losing, this will be enemy dies. And we're going to do the exact same thing for uh, enemy region 16 when you're in 13. Instead of you facing up, you're going to be facing down. And that's already all good to go. Now we just need to create the death and victory scenarios. So we'll have one switch for when you die, and one switch for when you don't. And these, it's going to be important to have some sort of command issued for your enemy's movement. Uh, that can be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a motion. For example, through on will do the job. We're going to go set movement route to enemy. And for this one, since he's going you, we're going to have turn towards player. He looks at you. Uh, the reason it's important to add something will be to uh, break the parallel process that keeps him moving. Otherwise, he'll kill you, but he'll keep moving in his circle. This will bring that to a halt once we add a couple more features um, here just gotta have him kill you but this is like the ice dude right put a little animation in here this is kinda nice you can do uh, battle animations in map so since he's ice here we'll have him use ice one on you. Wait for completion. And GG. This is not going to be action button, it's going to be auto run. Same with this, we want it to uh, happen automatically and halt your movements while it's going on. Here, uh, just to be safe, we're going to start off with the enemy. We're going to want uh, to turn him on through anyway. I'll show you why. Um, we're going to have you run at him, and you're going to run into him, basically. If you don't have his through on, 
then you're going to run up here and try and run into him and through is going to be off and you're going to get stuck and the game's going to freeze up. Now we have different scenarios whether you're facing up or down. That's something you can also do with conditional branches. So if you're facing up, then we're going to have you jump towards him. We're going to adjust him to make it look like he's laying on the ground dead. Uh, have him turn up. We want to turn direction fix on, otherwise afterwards when you try and talk to him, his corpse is going to turn towards you. Show a little animation, anything will do. And uh, let that be the end of it. Now, it's important at the end of these, you don't want them to repeat over and over again. This one's not going to repeat because it's GG. This one, we're going to put an erase event, and that'll terminate it. Now up here, this is going to terminate if we just create new events with these switches on. However, um, if the process is already in motion, it's going to be cached and it's going to complete. That's why we have to have your enemy uh, do some sort of motion in uh, the kill or victory sequence. That will terminate the cached uh, motion here so that he'll just stand still. So. We should already be good to go. Let's give it a test. Oh, this needs to be parallel process. And this can be deleted. Make sure this is parallel process. And this. All right. Now, right now, I'm free to move. I can go through all these regions. But as soon as he sees me, I'm toast. Likewise, let's say I get a little too close behind him. Oh, he hurt me. I'm toast. But if I'm standing in the right position, at the right time, it's going to activate the other sequence. And see. There'll be a little graphical glitch because I forgot to set him to blow. That's why I'm moving through him because he's at the same level as me. You won't see that gra graphical glitch if you set him to uh, below character. But there you have the general idea. And that's a very simple process. Um, for a map this simple, it might be easier to just have you know events right here where you know enemy touch and it triggers you to jump down or something. But uh, when you get this more complex, when you have three or four padding guards. Uh, you know, overlapping each other and none of them can see you in order for you to pull off the kill. It's stuff like hiding the bodies and everything I've incorporated into my game. Uh, it can be a lot of fun and very useful. That's one of the amazing powers of regions in this game, coupled with uh, light long variables and get location info. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, check us out on unobtainium13.com. Uh, comment if you like. Uh, there's not much there on RPG Maker VX Asin at the moment. It's more of a general entertainment blog, but I hope to be adding more in the future. So, 